Good day to you, each my beautiful and wonderful people on this wonderful Wednesday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's your favorite girl, Simply Michelle, the host with the most. And I have an incredible episode lined up today. But first, head on over to Amazon and purchase your copy of one of my books, Journaling the Journey with Jesus, Love, a Misconstrued Word, Created on Purpose for a Purpose, and Dear Diary. Now, do me a solid and hit that follow button and be sure to tell me what you think of today's episode. So without further ado, let's dive into today's episode, Identity Theft. Okay, y'all, let's switch it up a bit and let's talk about basketball. Now, the object of the game is for your team to get the ball in the right basket, scoring as many points as possible, all while making sure the other team doesn't score any points or limited points, okay? It's kind of like, remember when we were kids, uh, many of you may remember the game, uh, the game we used to play, Keep Away. And for those of you who are not re- familiar with that particular game, is where you get two people uh, on each side and then you have one person in the middle. And you're taking that ball... And you're throwing it over the head of the individual that's standing in the middle. You're trying to keep the ball away from the person in the middle. So the two outside people are on one team and then the middle person has a team of their own. And of course, if the whoever throws the ball and the person in the middle catches, you know, they now, you know, lose and they have to get in the middle while the person who caught the ball has to now go on the other team. You see what I mean? So when you think of basketball, for all of you um, that are not sports fans, um, you can kind of look at, you know, basketball in that way. That's what makes me think of basketball also is basically the game keep away. But whether you are actually going in uh, for like a layup, uh, shooting from like the three-point line, or just taking a shot wherever on the court, there is always going to be somebody or a few people from the other team that's going to try and block you from making the shot. And usually what happens is, if you are unable to take the shot because you have so many people surrounding you and trying to block you, you can pass the ball to someone else on your team that's open. Okay. Now here's the thing. When you pass that ball to somebody else on your team, that's open. And if they're open enough or bold enough to take that shot, Not only will your team gain the points for that shot, but that will also be an assist for you. Now, I know y'all probably wonder how is any of this. Okay, just just stay with me because I promise you we going somewhere. Okay, now when we think about basketball, there are times that the other team can steal the ball and run the opposite way to their side of the court and they can make a shot into their own basket. But here's the question I want to ask. Do the team who originally had the ball give up and just watch the other team score? Do the team, do the other team throw a tantrum at half court because the team stole the ball? Absolutely not. It doesn't work that way. They get out their feelings and they run in the direction that the ball is now going to stop the other team from scoring and gaining custody of the ball back, making sure to not foul anybody while in the process of, of doing that. So when I go to the scripture, John 10, 10, I'm going to read it from the easy version, E-A-S-Y. And it says, the robber only wants to take away my sheep. He wants to kill them. He comes only to destroy them. 
but I have come so that they can have true life and so that they can have everything that they need. And I know many of you are familiar, you know, with that scripture, you know, in the regular version where it says the thief comes to steal, kill and to destroy. But I have come so that you may have a life and have it more abundantly. Listen, y'all, it's the enemy's plan and it's the enemy's job to steal your joy, to steal your happiness, to steal your identity in Christ. It is his job to kill our hopes, kill our dreams, kill our self-confidence in who God says that we are. And it is his job to destroy families and relationships, especially our relationship with Christ. God never said we wouldn't have to work or fight for what belongs to us at times. He simply told us that true life, is what we will get. And all we need was ours. That's all he said. Basically, what belongs to us belongs to us. The question is, how bad do we truly want it? Are we willing to just lay down and allow the enemy to defeat us? Or are we willing to get back up and fight? If you know who you truly are in Christ and know what you carry within yourself, everything the enemy does will basically make sense to you. And the reason for that is because he is exposing who you really are in Christ through your adversity. Now, if I know that God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory, then when circumstances arise in my life, why am I folding? I should stand and react as though God has already supplied my every need. See, when the enemy tries to take your voice by making you timid, not standing up for yourself, not being confident, it's because he is convinced Listen to what I'm saying. The enemy is convinced that you will speak things to yourself and to others that show your true identity in Christ that's filled with power and authority. He has to shut down God's word in you so that you won't spread it to others. You may end up being a light to somebody that he don't want you to be a light to. The enemy knows that God can and he knows that God will more than we do, which is why he's coming against us so hard. The enemy knows you're a force to be reckoned with. So if he can steal your identity, if he can kill your identity, and if he can destroy your identity, then every plan for you to prosper and have a hope for a good future has terminated unless you get up, armor up, and take back your identity. Because when you know your identity in Christ, you recognize that when the enemy comes, that means the blessing is coming too. When you know your identity in Christ, you understand that the weapons you see forming, they're not going to prosper. When you understand your identity in Christ, you can speak confidently to the mountain and tell it to move from one place to another and it must obey, hitting all net. Listen, y'all, God will dispatch his angels to assist you in the things he already knows you cannot do on your own. In life, we'll come up against oppositions. There will be things surrounding you trying to steal your identity, but you cannot stop at half court. I know you tired. I know what it's like to have to fight and go through every single thing. You know what I mean? Just to get a piece of a blessing. I know what it's like to sit and watch the enemy 
rip stuff from your hands and you know full well God has already told you that was yours. But you cannot give up in defeat and let the enemy take what's rightfully yours without a fight. Because trust me when I tell you, he's going to fight you for something that ain't even he is. I say a lot, you know, when I would talk to my sister, you know, I would tell her, why is it that every single thing that I know God has told me belongs to me that I have to fight for? How is it that I could see other people prospering and being able to pray for what they want and actually see the manifestation of it. But I pray and I don't see anything. I begin to question myself, which is a tactic of the enemy. He doesn't want me to see what it is I need to see. So he keeps me in that defeated mind frame. You know, I would even share with her, you know, it's crazy. I could, you know, come into agreement with other people. People that I minister to, people that I talk to. I can pray for them. I can pray over them. I can pray, you know, in agreement. And lo and behold, it happens for them. But I can't seem to do anything for myself. But here's the thing. And I was one of them people that the enemy stole in the voice from. You know, I felt like if I said this, you know, people wouldn't hear me. If I said that, you know, does it really make sense? That don't even really make sense to me. And I'm not knocking anybody. Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not knocking anybody who, you know, went, you know, like to Bible school or, you know, uh, went to school to become ministers or, or pastors or whatever the case is. I don't knock that, you know, it is what it is, but it's kind of like when the Holy Spirit ministers to you and tell you things, it's kind of like, will people receive this? Because this, this is not something that they heard before. You know what I mean? Even though God is showing me and backing things up in scripture of what I'm saying, it's kind of like, well, Lord, okay, I get it. I understand it, but will others understand it? And when I got to a point to where I'm like, okay, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. It's not going to be me speaking no way. It's going to be, you know, the Holy Spirit speaking through me. And I would always ask God, especially when it came to, you know, being able to share something with somebody. Be my voice. And so when I began to step out to do just that, so many people rejected what I said. And immediately I thought, it was something I was doing wrong, something I was saying wrong. I took it personally because I'm like, God, how are you going to share this good information with me to share the deal and not even, you know, fix their heart to receive it? You, you see what I mean? So now it's like, OK, nope, I'm not doing it again. So then God works on me. He continues to work on me and I step out and I try it again. And I'm still shot down. And it was one of the things that because the enemy knows the power within me. He's, he, he can step in the same way God can step in and soften the hearts of people. The enemy can step in too. And he can plant thoughts in other people's head. Because here's the thing. We get so caught up on what we're used to hearing. We get so caught up on... You know what we think and our level of understanding of things to where if somebody says something to us that's outside of what we believe, we can't come into agreement with it. We don't think that that's God. 
But that's not always the case because God can use anybody and anything to get his word across to you. But then we, we denounce and we don't receive a word from God because it doesn't sound familiar. And this is why we have to come out of, you know, listening to things that are familiar and listen to the Holy Spirit. Because the scripture told us he comes to give us true life. It doesn't matter, you know, who you're sitting up under. If you think your pastor is the most anointed, listen, I'm going to tell you something. I think my pastor is awesome. I believe the Holy Spirit uses him in many ways. That man know he can bring a word and will preach you happy. And sometimes he preaches himself happy. I love my pastor. But one thing about it. My pastor can still be taught. You, you see what I mean? He doesn't think that he's at a level to where he can't be taught and receive something new. Now, if you just come in with some foolery and that's with anybody, your discernment is going to pick that up. But like I was saying, so many people shot me down. I stopped doing it because I'm like, nah, ain't nobody listening to me. No way. My name, if my name is attached to it, nothing is going to happen because everybody just think I'm out here playing crazy or playing God and everything else. So nobody listens to what I'm saying. But that wasn't the case. That's what the enemy wanted me to believe because I did not truly understand my identity in Christ. I did not truly understand who I was and who I belong to. So the enemy had a field day. As long as he could keep me there, other people couldn't get saved. As long as he could get me there, my light cannot shine in the lives of the people that needed it. I would not be sitting here today doing all that I can do to reach God's people if I continued that route. So I had to basically rededicate myself back to Christ because here's the thing. I've been saved my entire life. I got saved when I was six years old. I gave my life to Christ. I always believed that God was who he said he was. I used to have conversations with him all the time. But I did not live a life pleasing to God. And so when I had to rededicate my life back to God, that's when I decided to open my heart. Because if you're closing your heart to it, you're not going to be able to receive it. I decided to open my heart, surrender myself completely. And allow God to show me who I really am in him. And his word tells us that at all times. The enemy can come in in so many different ways and so many different angles. He will come in as your bestie. He will come in as your baby daddy or your baby mama. He will come in as your parents, your siblings, your cousins, your uncles, your aunties. He will come in as your coworker, your boss. It doesn't matter. He can use anybody. Keep it in mind, he mimics what God does. The same way God can use people, the enemy will too, y'all. That's why it's so important for us to know who we are in Christ and who Christ is within us. Because we can never do anything on our own strength. It's all about God. But see, the enemy will make you believe that you can do it without God. The enemy will try to make you believe, you know, that you can go out here and do any and everything you want to do. God forgives you anyway. Why not? But when you know who you are and who and whose you belong to, 
You know that's a lie from the pit of hell. You can't just get out of here and live your life how you want it and don't think that there are not going to be any repercussions. But that's all about knowing your identity in Christ. And that is one of the biggest things that the enemy is trying to steal from many of people is their identity. Because if he can strip that away from you, he's gotten everything else. But we have to know and discern those tactics when they come up on us. And we have to stay in the word and we have to ensure that the relationship we have with God is rock solid. We can't deviate from God in any way because that will allow the enemy access to us to come in and steal, kill and destroy. So this is how I look at it. When the enemy comes up on me, it's easy to actually say it than do it, but count it all joy, especially when he come bearing weapons, because that further lets us know that we are on the right track. And even though he's coming with weapons, your weapons are way bigger than what he could ever throw at you. Seriously. You got God. You got the Holy Spirit. I mean, look at your team. I mean, he's already defeated for one. Don't allow him to take away who you are, because if he can do that, he's taking everything else, y'all. The scripture tells us for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Contending only with physical appoint, uh, opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly supernatural places. Don't do your fighting on the court. You're going to mess around and get a technical foul, but you fight the enemy where it will hurt him the most, which is in the spirit. Don't let him steal your identity. You are an original. You can never be duplicated. God has many great things in store and plans for you and your future. Don't let the enemy come in and steal any of that from you. You are well on your way. Remember who God created you to be because he created you on purpose with a purpose. Well, you guys, that concludes today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I truly hope you found encouragement, motivation, guidance, and inspiration to live a life aligned with your true purpose. Again, I'm your favorite girl, Simply Michelle, the host with the most. Don't forget to tune in each Wednesday morning on your ride to work. And remember, you are unique and there's a purpose waiting to be fulfilled within you. Don't let it go unnoticed or unexplored. Now you go and have a great day on purpose. See you next time.